we have, you know, we run our office uh, in a very special way. We have no ownership of the office. We gave our ownership to charity. Mm -hmm. And we have, for instance, a constitution. And the constitution stipulates what work we can do. I'm president of something which is called National Communities Resource Centre, which is really about training the less fortunate, giving, giving a chance to the less fortunate. And we train those people to look after the, themselves, after their friends and so on. This can be anything from uh, training young children to security to running jobs and so on. So it's really about social, having a social responsibility. I'm sure you, you may have been asked that question quite a few times, but... Well, I mean, you know, again, we're all complex figures. Yes. Uh, I don't need to say... Um, I think, you know, Le Corbusier did the... Uh, changed the world. I think his uh, view of uh, responsibility, again, to, to uh, low-cost housing and so on, has, again, freedom of the ground, freedom of the, of the spaces in the... In the uh, in the framework of the building. Um, the big windows, health through sun, all that's part of Le Corbusier's. And that period, I mean, we're talking about 1910s, 1920s, and so on. So he was a, a revolutionary. You have to then say, um, there are many other architects working. Le Corbusier, Frank Lloyd Wright was extremely interesting, yes. of course, at that time. And a little bit later, uh, well, Gropius. Uh, so we had a lot of architects who, the Bauhaus was basically a social, a deeply rooted in the concept of social responsibility and also deeply rooted in what you mentioned, which is that we should not be working in isolated architecture, graphic design, uh, automatic uh, cars. These are all linked. I, I believe in the spirit. I'm absolutely not religious. Mm -hmm. um, but I do believe in the, that uh, the enjoyment one gets, mm -hmm. uh, the hope that one has, is deeply rooted within our society, which you can call the spirit. I'm fascinated and excited by science. I think it's a very interesting period. If we don't destroy ourselves because of the environment, the lack of understanding about environment, our environmental sustainability and climate change, if we don't destroy ourselves, the future could be fantastic. Could be fantastic. What do I think? I think we are now already in a, a period where many millions will now die. Many, many millions in the next 20, 30 years because of climate change. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing it now in Pakistan, Bangladesh, for instance, Africa, yeah. you know, starvation. Many of the wars we're seeing now are due to deforestation, uh, to the extension of the Sahara and uh, uh, the, the, the lack of water. These are all very much stimulate war and stimulate genocide because he's got it and I haven't, so I'll kill him to have it. So I think we're already in serious problems and we're going to get much worse. Can we, can we get out of it? Well, we'll have to pay. We need to minimize the amount that we're going to pay in the sense of, li of lives. But I'm not totally pessimistic. I mean, I think, for instance, technology will produce some of the answers. I think we will see biotechnology changing radically. Mankind is very inventive. But we need to do more invention. We need to insulate our buildings. We need to stop using oil and coal and carbon and so on. We need to be, regulate, our, 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 uh, regulate our needs to suit that which are, are out there. I wrote the... Labour Party's uh, manifesto, strategy for the development of cities. Called, it was called Towards an Urban Renaissance for the Prime Minister. And one of those recommendations were to create a, a number of regional cities, uh, centres for cities and architecture, if you like, where people could meet, discuss, and participate in the key word, uh, what they wish to do in the future, and also understand the implication of what that is. For instance, what is the implication of the car, taking an example? You know, that is a very serious question. Uh, and I think, you know, we are on the positive side, we are seeing things in, you know, I go to Paris and in Lyon, and I see all these bicycles, 
It's fantastic. Uh, you know, and you, you go to Copenhagen and one third of the people go by bicycle. That's a big step forward. And it's equally big because you meet people and, it's, and cities are for the meeting of people.